Hey, what's going on guys? Today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a free Radius server, but to have this run over a WPA2 personal network instead of a WPA2 enterprise network. So the benefit of this is that your Wi-Fi network, instead of it being a username and password, it is just a password and based on the MAC address of your client, it will automatically assign a VLAN to that user. So. Without further ado, let's get started. So we have a fresh Ubuntu virtual machine here from DigitalOcean, and we are going to be following this instruction for the most part, uh, and then we're going to kind of break off from this guide, and I'm gonna show you the extra stuff you have to do, so that way you can just have a WPA2 personal network. So as you can see, I just copied this first command here. This will install all of the packages that we need. I already updated the system because the virtual machine has just been created. So we just need to install the packages. Well, now we're going to enable these services. You'll see here in one second. All right, so we now have installed those packages. We're going to paste this in. This is going to enable these services, Apache and Free Radius. Free Radius is the service that we're going to be using for obviously the Radius server. Now, that's the thing. So this is still running over a, over a Radius server with a username and password, uh, but the difference is that instead of having a username and password that the user enters, it'll be based on the MAC address of the client. And your router should automatically enter in that information. So, and you also don't need to accept a certificate or anything like that. It's a lot easier for the end user. So we're going to follow these instructions. No, no, yes, 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 yes. No, no, yes, 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 yes. All right, now we're going to say, we're going to log into the root user. This again has no password. And we're going to create our database, create our user. Now, obviously, this is going to be very insecure. Uh, do not do this. Do not use this radio server. It will be deleted by the time you see this. But I'm going to just basically word for word copy from this guide for the most part. And then, like I said, we'll break off later on. Now, I'm also going to go back in here while we're here. And I'm going to make a root user. I'm going to say create user beam networks at localhost and we're going to say identified by password and we're going to give that all right i apologize for that it's actually grant all privileges on star period star to beam networks at localhost with grant option uh, for some reason i didn't say what privileges to give it so whatever we're going to continue on here we're going to link these together we have to make sure we're uh, the root user first, paste that in there, enter in the password. We're going to exit out of this, paste this in, there we go. All right, so now we're going to configure the SQL modules and stuff on the free radius server. We're going to search up dialect. You'll see it here soon. Yep. Or say my SQL. And we're going to also search up this and uncomment this one and comment that out. We're gonna read clients that should already be, yes, oh, it's not, okay. And then we also need to check to make sure this is set to NAS. And we also need to uncomment TLS, which is here. We're gonna uncomment, or sorry, we're going to comment out TLS because we're not gonna be using certificates to connect to the MySQL server. Uh, we're gonna continue on. Scroll down here. I believe it's right after all of this connection info. Yes. We're going to uncomment the server, uncomment port, uncomment the login, and uncomment the password. So we're going to fill in password here. I believe that's what this guide set it to. We are going to check. Identified by password. It's all capitals. Okay. We're going to continue. And that looks fine. That looks fine. And we did all of that. Cool. So we're going to close out of this file, and we're going to paste all of these in. So now we're getting to the point where we're about to break off from the guide. Real quick, we're going to install phpMyAdmin. It's just a lot easier to see what's going on, especially for the purposes of this tutorial. We're going to install this. We're going to configure Apache 2. Click OK, because we installed that previously. Uh, when you copied this command up here, uh, it installed Apache 2. So we're going to scroll down. We're back down here. Basically, now what we're going to do, we're going to set up, first of all, dynamic VLAN assignment, which basically will allow free radius to tell your router what VLAN to put your phone or whatever device on. So, 
continue. Um, I'm just doing a lot of default settings here. You can look through these, but majority of them should stay the defaults. I've just found that's how it just works. Uh, we're gonna nano up this file, edit this file. We're gonna scroll down, and we need to search up use tunneled reply, and we need to find the second occurrence of this. So this is the first occurrence, second occurrence. We're gonna say yes to this one. This is under the EAP settings, and okay, so that's good. Um, now we need to go back, and we're gonna say users. Now. This is the part where once you're doing the WPA2 network, you need to edit this part here. So at the very bottom of this user's file, you need to say default auth dash type uh, colon, I think, equals accept. Basically what this is saying is the default authentication answer or type is accept. And why you need this is because if you have this on a WPA2 network, okay, and you don't want to have to put a MAC address of a client in, you will have this default auth, auth type, so that way your phone will just still join whatever network the SSID is based off of. So let's say my SSID is based off of VLAN 501, and you don't have a MAC address that's listed on the database, you will join VLAN 501. But if you do have a MAC address listed on our database, which we will set up later, your phone will join whatever VLAN is assigned to that specific MAC address. So that's good. And before I do any of that stuff, um, I'm just going to check down here. Yeah, okay, so that's pretty much all we got to do there. So we're going to plug this in, we're going to reload, and we're going to open up PHP My Admin. So we're going to type in the We're going to log into this VM here on PHP My Admin. Like I said, all of this will be deleted by the time you see this, so don't even bother trying to log in. Oh, wrong password. Um, there we go. Okay, so now we're going to go over here to Radius. We're going to configure a few things. First of all, we're going to configure our NAS, which is the, there's a specific name. It's like Network Authentication Server. Uh, it's not like uh, Network Attached Storage like you would think it is. So we're going to type in here, this is going to be, if you have a VM hosted in the cloud, this is going to be your public IP address from wherever you have your router. So in my case, I'm going to put in my home's public IP address. Obviously, this will be blurred out. So we're going to type this in here. Uh, for our short name, we are going to actually type in any. So A-N-Y, okay? Our type is other. We have two ports. Our secret, this is whatever password you want, so I'm going to say very secret, secret. I like to make stupid passwords because honestly, it doesn't really matter to me. Like the worst someone can do is grab your logins, but my logins aren't anything special, so it doesn't matter to me. Description, I'm going to say Beam Networks Router. Okay, and for all of these, we're going to leave them on null, which just won't define anything, and we're going to scroll down, click go, boom, go to browse, it's right there. So every time you have a new site or something, you're going to want to add that NAS. All right, cool. So our next thing, we're going to go down to rad check, which is right here. We're going to insert, okay? This is going to be our first device. So in my case, I'm going to use my laptop, my MacBook Air, okay? Oh, shoot. Uh, we're going to go here to settings general about sorry we're gonna go to settings Wi-Fi click details go to hardware and copy our MAC address I'm gonna paste that in that is going to be our username we're gonna scroll down to value paste that into value as well and for our operator we're gonna say colon equal sign and our attribute is going to be clear text password just like that so basically username MAC address value is the password or it's going to be the MAC address in this case. Go back to browse, it'll be right there. All right, next we're going to go down to rad group reply. Okay, and we're going to click insert. And this is going to be a couple steps here. So first of all, we're going to create what's called a tunnel type. So we're going to say our group name is, let's just say admin. You'll see why here in a second. Our attribute is going to be tunnel dash type operator again is going to stay the equal sign now it's actually not the same as last time this is just an equal sign with no colon value is 13 
Okay, we're gonna click go. Go back to browse, copy this. We're gonna make another one that's tunnel dash medium dash type. Okay, and it's going to be value is six. And finally, we're gonna copy it one more time. We're gonna say tunnel private dash group dash ID. And this is going to be whatever VLAN number uh, your network is. So I'm gonna do 17, which is my admin network in this case. So basically what we just did here, we created three different attributes and groups. So basically we have a group that is called the admin. As you can see here in the group name column, we have three attributes, which all of these work together basically to assign the VLAN. You'll see why this is important later, but basically we have these three things for each group. So every group that you add, if you want more networks or whatever, you're gonna have to add more of these, of the same three things, but you're gonna have to add more of them per network, if that makes sense. Okay, so next we're gonna go to rad user group on the left. We're gonna click insert, and we're gonna copy our MAC address in once again. This is our username, okay? Our group name is what we just made previously in the rad group reply. So in my case, it's gonna be admin. Priority is zero. Click go. So if we go back to browse here, basically you can see we just added in our user and we assigned it to the group admin, right? So we're gonna say sudo service free radius reload. Once that's done, well, it's gonna be done pretty quickly, but now that that's done, we're gonna go configure our UDM pro settings. Okay, so you're gonna to go to settings in the bottom left, profiles, you're gonna go over to radius. I apologize for how much I'm gonna to have to blur out here. There's gonna be a lot that I have to blur out. Okay, we're gonna create new, okay? This is going to be called Digital Ocean Radius. Now, you can name it whatever you want. I'm just gonna name it Digital Ocean Radius, okay? Our authentication server is the IP address of your radius server, so we're gonna search up here. We're gonna do NS lookup VM UBN 2 Digital Ocean Elevated Tech Dot Systems. Basically, I'm just grabbing the IP address of my DigitalOcean virtual machine, paste that in there, shared secret. Uh, if you remember, we if you remember, we configured this in the NAS settings. I'm gonna copy over my secret, add that. Now we're gonna turn on accounting. I'm gonna paste that shared secret in again. Type in our IP address, 116.42, okay? We're gonna click add, and I'm gonna turn on interim update interval is 60 seconds. So I'm not exactly sure what interim update interval does, but I think it does pull the accounts from the server every 60 seconds unless an account is requested um, from someone logging in. So this will just, I think it will cache it or something on the UDM. Uh, I've seen that it kind of speeds up my radius, but that's just from my experience. We're gonna click apply changes. And now we're gonna create a new Wi-Fi network here. So I'm gonna, like I said, have to blur out a lot here, but I'm gonna push out this SSID that is defaulting to the DMZ network, which is just the basic flat um, slash 24 VLAN um, that is the default on the UDM. Uh, we're gonna say the name is going to be Beam Networks Test. Password is going to be Beam Networks, just like so. Scroll down here, we're gonna switch to manual settings. Scroll down even more, we're gonna do Radius Mac Authentication. Turn that on. This menu is glitched for some reason but you're gonna to wanna to pick the bottom one or whichever order it is on your screen. And then for our MAC address format, if we go back over here, we click red user group. You can see our MAC address is lowercase letters with colons in between. And I'm gonna match that on here. So lowercase letters with colons in between. And as you can see down here, we have our security protocol. We're gonna leave that on WPA2. And that is all. So now we can scroll back up. You don't need to, but I'm going to. <laughs> you can click Add Wi-Fi Network, and this is going to push out this SSID that, like I said, the default is on the DMZ network, which in my case is a 192.168, whatever. And then what we did as well is we pushed out the admin group, which routes to VLAN 17, and you'll see that it'll be like 10.140.17. So actually, I forgot one step. We're gonna say pseudo system CTL restart free radius. Uh, the reason you have to restart free radius is because after you configure a NAS, I believe that requires a full restart for free radius. Okay, now we're gonna go and connect to Beam Networks Test. And if all goes to plan, yep, here we are. We are connected to Beam Networks Test. We're gonna click details here. 
And as you can see, our IP address is 10.140.17.9. And that is exactly what we want. We're going to click Cancel. And just to prove to you that this is in fact working, we're going to go back to Rad Group Reply. And as you can see, we are currently on VLAN 17, which you can see by the 10.140.17. So now I'm going to put myself onto a different network, which is VLAN 222. I'm going to let that save. And now we're going to reload Free Radius once again. We're going to turn off our Wi Fi and turn it back on. And as you can see, once we reconnect to the other test network, as you can see, once we reconnect to Beam Network's test and we click Details, our IP address is in fact 10.140.222.52. Uh, I did not change a single setting on Unify. I left Unify the exact same as it was configured previously, but I was able to pull a different VLAN thanks to the dif this different value on this Tunnel Private Group ID for the group of admin which is really cool. I didn't have to accept a certificate. I have one single password for this network. So the benefit for this network is, in my case, if I want to put this network onto my IoT, if I want to put this VLAN authentication onto my IoT network, what I can do is for certain devices, if I do not want them on the IoT network and I want them on a different VLAN, I don't have to create a different SSID for that. I can still move them onto the IoT network, but Unify in free radius will actually route it to a different VLAN. So you can essentially have one SSID and have a ton of different networks that this one SSID routes to. And this is compatible on all kinds of old devices too, which a lot of the WPA2 enterprise, WPA3 enterprise networks are not compatible with. So this is just something cool I've tested. It works pretty well for me. So if you have any questions, let me know. Uh, it should be pretty straightforward. The nice thing too is that since this is all in the SQL server, you can actually pull this from Active Directory or from any database of usernames you may have and format this into this format. And every time you make a change, you just have to run this reload command and it will just push it out, push your accounts out. It'll automatically um, allow this to work on free radius and your radius server. So it's super easy to update accounts, very quick to install, I would say. And it's a pretty great solution, especially if you don't want to have a WPA2 enterprise network with certificates, usernames, and passwords for all your devices. This is a lot easier. You just have to grab the MAC address of your device and plug it into your radio server. So, like I said, if you have any questions, let me know. Hopefully this video is helpful. If you learned something, let me know. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next video.